Hi, Big Dreamers! Today we welcome Naveen Jain, who grew up in very poor conditions in India to become an internet entrepreneur now focused on space travel to the moon and beyond. You ready? It's time to dream big! Welcome to the Dream Big Podcast Show. We're inspiring you to shoot for the moon, take aim and go. We bring to you amazing guests who truly love what they do. Every day they're living their dreams, and so can you. Dream big, take action to reach your goals. Are you pumped yet? It's showtime, let's rock and roll. Welcome to the Dream Big Podcast Show. I am your host, Eva Cartman. And today my mom and I are so excited to have Naveen Jain on the show. Naveen is one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the entire world. And his journey is truly remarkable. He is a very busy man and we were honored to talk to him and have him share his wisdom with the big dreamers in our community. As you'll hear, Naveen is fascinated by space and believes that space travel is a reality we will see in our lifetimes. He even said that one day I'll be able to go on a vacation to the moon just like now we go on a vacation to Mexico. How cool is that? Without further ado, I know you are excited to listen to our interview with the amazing Naveen Jain, so let's roll the tape. Hi, Naveen. How are you, Eva? Good. Hello, hello. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us on the Dream Big Podcast. I am so happy to be talking to you. My mom and I watched and, and enjoyed reading about your incredible journey and in preparation for this interview. Yes, and we learned a lot about you. We can't wait to ask all the questions, Naveen. Well, please, I'm looking forward to it. So we know you grew up in India, and uh, of course, your family back in the days didn't have a lot of money. And today you're such a successful entrepreneur, and you consider to be one of the most successful internet entrepreneurs of all time. So that's incredible. Can you please describe, Naveen, um, what it was like growing up in India, and have you ever had a dream of being who you are today? Well, you know, to some extent, you know, growing up in India is really what set the foundation for me to start thinking about what are the biggest problems facing humanity and what can I possibly do one day to solve them? And, you know, as opposed to really thinking every day when you wake up and saying, why can't someone do something about it? You start asking yourself and saying, what can I do about it? And when we start to take individual responsibility to solve problems, that's when the problems get solved. So, so, you know, I'm a firm believer that as individuals and a small group of people, we are now capable of doing things that only the countries (laughs) and the superpowers could do before. And I really believe the next set of superpowers are going to be entrepreneurs, not the countries. And that is a great, great feeling where someone like Eva is going to grow up and take control of what she cares about. And really we start to think about how, when she grows up, what the world is going to look like and be able to create that world rather than for, for that world to happen. It's so true. It's so true because uh, now looking at our uh, young generation, right? Like Eva, as you said, she came up with the idea of the Dream Big podcast. And that came from the problem of not having something like this on iTunes for kids. And we were driving to school for uh, like about, what, Eva, 40 minutes? Yeah, because um, I used to go to Topanga Elementary and it was... uh, Long way from Woodland Hills. Yes. So we were driving and uh, we would have discussions and me and my husband, we always listen to podcasts. It's like, why don't we have something like this for kids where they can uh, learn about success, mindsets, um, and mindfulness very young? So Eva came up with this idea and you're absolutely right that new generation can create and this even kind of now, leadership. I'm in the top 10 podcasts. Of course, awesome. because of your hard work. So Eva, what's happening is, you know, we are living in this one of the most innovative time in our human history. 
And I think by the time you grow up, the world is going to be different than you have ever imagined today because these technologies are going to make these things possible. So someday the things that we find are scarce are going to be in abundance. There is no doubt in my mind, Eva, when you grow up, there'll be people be living on the moon. People will be living on the Mars. People are going, going to be going to these places as a vacation, just like we go to Hawaii. There's going to be people going to the moon. And I think it's going to be an amazing feeling where moon really becomes our eighth continent and we start to treat it like that. And we'll be communicating just like you and I are communicating right now. You know, I actually was going to say exactly what you said. I mean, later in the world... Things will, like, achieve, like, people's dreams will achieve what they want. And all, and I was going to say that maybe someone would want to live on the moon. Like, we, like, there could be, like, People and cities on the moon, right? Yeah, like a whole nother world that you could just take vacation on. Absolutely. And I think, you know, to, you know, in some sense, people never used to live in Australia. They u- never used to live in America. And suddenly we start to settle down all these colonies. In the same way, we're going to be settling down on the moon and the Mars and the Titan and Europa and all those places. Because at the end of the day, there's no reason we can't live any- everywhere. And all the things that we fight about, whether it's land or water or energy, these things are in abundance in space. So let's just make sure that everyone has everything that they have always wanted and get allow people to dream so big that people think they are crazy and never be afraid to fail. Because we as entrepreneurs never fail. Our ideas may or may not work. And every idea that does not work simply is a stepping stone to a bigger success and bigger idea. So we should all focus on what are the biggest problems that we can focus on solving and be the catalyst that actually goes out and does it. You know, speaking of the moon, you have been involved in too many companies, of course, to discuss on this short podcast, but I would love if you would tell our audience about your most recent company, Moon Express. Of course. As, well, that's not my most recent company, but I'll be more than happy to tell you, Eva, about Moon Express. Moon Express is a company that's a space exploration company, and our goal is to make the humanity a multiplanetary society. So someday we could be, you know, save ourselves from becoming a dinosaur. It's only a question of when it happens. You know, we are living on this spacecraft called Earth, and if we ever get hit by a large asteroid, we'll all become dinosaurs. So imagine a dinosaur rolling in their grave and thinking, what if they had a good entrepreneurial dinosaur? Mm They'll still be living on the moon or the Mars. You know, Naveen, you're such an interesting person. You're uh, talking and doing things that people never even thought about. Like, for example, you have an incredible uh, collection of meteors. And uh, we saw in the video that you have some rare, rare pieces. So can you please tell us, about it? How did you even came up with the idea of having that collection? You know, it is something that I felt that if you can touch and feel the moon, and if you can touch and feel the Mars, it really brings it close to us. And, you know, to some extent, you start with the one piece, and then you suddenly have two, and then you have ten. And that's how I started collecting the meteorites. You know, my, my other venture that I'm really excited about, Eva, really is that I think you're going to enjoy is in the healthcare space where we believe that we can create a world where sickness becomes optional. By the time you grow up, my hope is that no one will ever get sick because we will understand our body in such detail that we will we'll be able to fix it up before we even see the symptom. So just like the Hubble telescope showed us that we are not alone and there are billions of these galaxies and billions of these stars, imagine our body, it consists of lots and lots of microorganisms called bacteria and the viruses, and that's what makes us who we are. So in some sense, even though we are so proud of ourselves, we are nothing but a great container for parasites. Yes, that's true. But how is that possible, Naveen? How, like, what are the technologies behind it? Well, so imagine if we are able to take care of this ecosystem by looking at in, inside our gut, because our gut really is the key 
to the health. And I think when the, my mom used to say, listen to your gut, she was the great scientist, I suppose, because she knew if I didn't take care of my gut, I can't take care of my health. And what we're realizing is all the diseases that we think of, whether it's Alzheimer and the Parkinson's or depression or anxiety, obesity, allergies, autoimmune diseases, they all start in the gut. 90% of serotonin that makes us feel good is produced in our gut. The Parkinson's disease starts in the gut, not in the brain. So imagine if we understood what's happening inside our gut and we eat the right food. And when we eat the right food and the right nutrition, we stay healthy. So you don't need to buy drugs anymore. We just need to eat the right food. Right. It's like um, uh, it, it's like if we look at our body, not um, as a, a just like uh, the way to take us to place to place, but we look at our body and everything that's inside as our temple, as the most expensive vehicle that we have here on this planet. So if, uh, for example, you, you never know about vehicles a lot, right? You, yes. uh, you have great cars and everything. So for people who buy the most expensive, cars they take care of it they take great care of it so the question comes down to why a lot of times we don't look at our body the same way right and our not only but uh, we should take care of our body but mind and soul yes and i really believe that these things are all come together because the stress causes our body to essentially start to release toxins so if we can take care of take care of ourselves by taking care of our body and our mind. So really, you know, you know, meditating, really being spiritual and really being intellectual and emotionally balanced and really believe that is the key to a good health. And as parents, uh, Olga, the best thing is, you know, our job is not, to, you know, we say that we can only take the horse to the water, but we can't make it drink. That's not our job to take our children to the water and force them to drink. Our job is to make them so curious and mm -hmm. make them hungry and make them thirsty. Because if you can make someone thirsty for knowledge, then they'll go find their own water and they will drink. So our job is to make the children thirsty for knowledge. Keep them intellectually curious because I believe the day you stop being intellectually curious, you actually are dead. You become a zombie. So I think the intellectual curiosity is what keeps us alive and healthy. So keep that spirit in mind and just go out and believe in yourself. And if you think something is impossible, it becomes impossible for you, not someone else. So believe in yourself and go out and make the impossible possible. Thank you. Thank you, Naveen. Such a important uh, wisdom here. I also have a question. Ask me, Eva. Um, do you have any daily routines? <clears throat> and especially those daily routines that help you to dream big, because obviously your, daily, your dreams are huge, Naveen, and you're talking about all sorts of aspects, right? Even yeah. like going to the moon. So I'm interested... As well, what are your daily routines that help you to stay focused, motivated, that fresh in your so, mind and body and soul? So I tell you, I don't think it is really a good thing to follow the habits of people who are successful. You should really be following their thought process. So many people want to know what is the habit that people who are successful, what they do in the daily routine. And somehow they believe if they do the same thing, somehow they become that. So for example... Tony Robbins takes an ice bath every morning when he wakes up. I can assure you, you can take an ice bath every day. You're not going to become Tony Robbins. Right. You become Tony Robbins by thinking like he, he does. So in some sense, the thought process I have is that every problem is really a opportunity. The bigger the problem, the bigger the opportunity. And, you know, we have to think about doing good and doing well are not mutually exclusive. That means if you can build a company that can help billions of people, you can create a company that can be tens of billions of dollars worth. But idea is to do something that's meaningful. When you start something, ask yourself a question. God forbid if I'm actually successful in doing what I'm doing, is it going to move the needle? Is it going to help billions of people? And the answer is yes, that's the time it's worth dedicating your life to. So find out what is it that you're going to die for and then live for it. 
Right. And what is the thought process? Like, how do you, did you help your children to uh, with that thought process? So, you know, all three of our children are just amazing. Um, our oldest started when he was 17 year old, something called Kairos Society. That has now become the world's largest college entrepreneurship nonprofit in the world. And then when he graduated from Wharton, he started a company called Human that got acquired recently by Match.com. And our daughter, who is just amazing, she graduated from Stanford a few months ago, and she was a Stanford STEM fellow, Stanford Mayfield fellow. She's on the board of Stanford Women in Business. She's a United Nations ambassador for girls' education through Girla program. And our youngest one is a sophomore at Stanford. So really, and our thinking was to expose them to all the different things that are possible. Because when you expose your children to different possibilities, they go out and start to think about they can do everything rather than the only the few things that they are exposed to. That's true. For you, what does it mean to be successful? You know, to me, the success really means how many lives are you able to improve positively. It's not about the amount of money you have in the bank. It is about the lives you change. And the success is measured. And we know when you become successful, when you become humble, because humility is a sign of success. When you still have iota of arrogance left in you, that means you're still trying to prove something to yourself or someone else. So stay humble and start making a positive impact on people's life. And that's what the success is about. Thank you. Thank you, Naveen. I definitely agree. What do you think, Eva, success is for you? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Well, success is about, as I said, doing great things, solving big problems. And if you happen to, if you happen to help billions of people, you will create a great company and great enterprise, but never ever focus on making money because that's simply a byproduct of doing things that you really enjoy doing. Yeah, well, like you could be, like you could have a lot of money, but you could, but you could also not be happy. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And and you can never be and you don't have to be successful just because you have money. I know there are presidents of the countries that we're not going to name that somehow they think that having money is becoming successful. Right. Yeah. So, for example, Eva, uh, like example of success is when you just start something from the simple idea. Oh, what if I interview for myself people in different talks and walks of life and that can be accessible to other children as well? And little by little, as you said at the beginning, your podcast, uh, a lot of time, number one in kids and family category. Speaking of kids, if yes. you go back in time and talk to your 10-year-old self, what would be the best advice? I would say dream so big that people think you are crazy and anyone who laughs at your ambition, just walk away from them. Don't surround yourself anyone who is negative and tells you it's not possible. Only surround yourself with the people who believe in you and people who are willing to encourage you to do great things like your mom did. She didn't say you can't do it. You're so young. She said, let's go do it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And also... People who say that, they're just, they're just, they're bullies. They don't want you. Or well, they well, project they, their own yeah, fears they, on you. Yeah, because they are scared. Yeah. But yeah. they are just, they just want to be, they just want to, like, stay the, tell, same, stay the same and show people that they're the boss. Sometimes yes. can be true. You know, Naveen, I want to tell you a quick story and for our listeners too. When Eva was four years old, she was really into making jewelry. So yeah. one day she was making jewelry and we lived um, in the middle of, um, uh, by the Melrose Place, by the Grove Place uh, in Los Angeles. And it's a busy street. You can go there and do some shopping and there are a lot of people. So Eva just turned four years old. She was making jewelry and it was about like 4 p.m. on Saturday night and all of a sudden I see her dressed up and it's like Eva where are you going she's like mom let's get go uh, go get yourself ready we're going to sell my jewelry I was like what where what <laughs> how she's like 
well, we're going to go outside and we're going to sell jewelry. I was like, okay. Even though at that time I thought, well, it's kind of interesting, you know, in the United States, like going with a child on the street selling jewelry, maybe sometimes can is not a bad, best idea as a parent. And then all of a sudden I thought, okay, if she wants to do it, I'm definitely going to support her. We're going to go. So we went outside on the street and she sold five bracelets for five dollars. That so, is so nice. He and she was so just turned four. And uh, well, before we went, of course, I said, okay, Eva, what's your plan? What are you going to tell people? And let's talk about it. So we talked her over. So when she started talking to the first person, she was prepared. And I also prepared her that a lot of people will say no. And that's yes. okay. You know, 10 people will say no and the 11th person will say yes. So she was prepared for that. And it wasn't upsetting for her when people said, no, not right now, or I don't have money right now or cash with me, but it's so beautiful. So that was, that was cool. Yeah. Right, but- and you know, I could have sold the bracelets at the Grove. We could actually walk to the Grove and yeah. sell bracelets. Well, that is so nice, Eva, because it's not about where you start. It is about where you end up. And every every big company always starts small. It comes with a very small ideas. It comes with a very small group of people who believe in it. And then suddenly you get surrounded by you know yourself with so many people who believe in you. And next thing you know, you're running a massive, large company, helping people in you know, all the countries around the world. And these people are all looking up to you and saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. So Naveen, when you doubted yourself in the past, what made you to overcome those fears and continue to go on? Because I'm sure there are a lot of people who said no to you as well, right? (laughs) Yes, but you know, you never, you self-doubt only when you believe that it is not possible. So I always believe that it doesn't matter what the outcome is. I'm going to focus on the process of just enjoying what I'm doing and giving it absolutely my best. Every single day, I'm going to go out and give 100% of my energy to what I am doing. And I'm going to believe that it doesn't, that I'm going to be successful because there is no other way that I would uh, fail. That means I believed that it is going to happen and it happened. Because when you believe in yourself so much that you don't allow the failure to be an option. Right, but Naveen, at the same time, it's not possible to do it all by yourself, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, Who is your support group that helps you and keeps you motivated, maybe? Who is your number one motivation in life? Or what? So obviously, our children are the one who always keep you honest, and the children are the one who always tell you what you don't want to hear, right? So to some extent, it's, uh, you know, my job is to be a good role model for them, and their job is to continue to let me know when I'm doing something wrong. And they believe that, you know, every company, when I start, they say, oh, dad, I don't think this is going to work. And I say, <laughs> you know what? I'm still your dad, and I'm going to show you how it's actually done. It's <laughs> awesome. You have already made many of your dreams a reality. But if you look at yourself today, what is your big dream for the future? My big dream is that I just told you that one day we're going to live in the world where there's going to be nobody ever going to be sick. We're going to bring the peace in the world by getting rid of the things that people fight over. So imagine we fight over land, we fight over water, and we fight over energy. And all these things are in abundance in the space. So if we could live everywhere, there'll be plenty of water for everyone. There'll be plenty of energy for everyone. There'll be plenty of land for everyone. And we'll all live happily and peacefully together. So my goal is to really create abundance of everything that we want rather than living in this world where things are scarce and only some people have it. What if everybody could have everything that they want to live a good life? And then people can focus not just on simply making money to live, but to actually do things that they enjoy and really be creative and, you know, inspire everyone else to find their own moonshot. So our hope is that when we land on the moon, Eva, it will inspire the billions of people around the world to find their own moonshot and to go out and solve the big problems because they realize when someone like me who grew up poor can land on the moon, what would they do? And Naveen, sign us up. When you go there, we'll be the first yeah. <laughs> to join you. Uh-huh. And you also, also I, 
I'm yeah. also wondering, maybe yeah. if people just think big, then maybe in the world, like, so nothing, like, so nothing can hurt people in the world. There could be just, like, a cover around the world mm-hmm. that you would have to, like, it would, like... So nothing could just like destroy the world, destroy the world, or and you know, everyone gonna live in peace and love, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, and like so, nothing would like the trees, like the the trees would um be a little bit far from a little bit far from your house, so they wouldn't fall on your house, mm-hmm. and there would be covers over houses, like. <laughs> Yeah. That, well, maybe it's some one day something that uh, you will invent, Eva, maybe. <laughs> or someone else that nothing awesome. could destroy. Right. Not even fire. Exactly. Well, that, Eva, all it takes is the imagination and the problem that you care to solve. Whether you think it's too noisy and you can build something a sonic fence, that means that no sound can come in, and suddenly you can live in a noisy street, but you hear nothing. You can live, you can build a thing so that nothing can fall over it because it's going to use the magnetic energy or sound energy to push it away. So, yes, all those problems that you think about, Eva, can all be solved. There's nothing, there's no problem in the world that innovation and entrepreneurship can't solve. So keep dreaming, keep imagining and making, keep making it happen. Thank you, Naveen. Thank uh, we you. can talk to you hours and hours, but unfortunately, we have to wrap up. And you gave us so many uh, nuggets of wisdom that uh, I can't wait to re listen to the interview and write down things that you said. <laughs> yep. So, the last question we have for you is okay. where can our audience find out more about you? Well, uh, by listening to the Eva's podcast. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they can always. Um, Email it to me and uh, naveen.jen at gmail.com or they can find me on Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook. I'm always there for anyone who ever wants to reach out to me. Do you have Instagram? I sure do. <laughs> awesome. We'll find there. We'll find you there and we'll connect. And speaking of Twitter, uh, my very last question, uh, Naveen, uh, just recently you said uh, something. If you aren't scared by your ambition, you aren't dreaming big enough. I think this is like a great summary of our podcast uh, today. So I uh, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for coming and joining us and thousands of our big dreamers, right? Mm-hmm. Thank, well, thank you very much, Eva. Thank you, Olga. I'm really looking forward to listening to your podcast. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. And we'll connect to you all on Instagram. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and on Dream Big. Bye. Bye. I hope you all enjoyed the interview as much as we did. Naveen talked about the importance of big and bold ideas and why he builds companies that will make a true impact. Please be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes so you automatically get new episodes as soon as they are published. If you can leave an honest review, that would be very helpful to get more exposure for the show and help us continue to bring you great guests. It would mean the world to us. Thank you again for tuning in. I'll see you in the next episode and remember to always dream big.